Pardon the interruption, but I'm Mike Wilbon. So many 45 escaped cows stampeded through a neighborhood in North Yorkshire, England. Tony Kornheiser. Sounds like utter chaos. You get it? <laughs> utter, you get it? <laughs> uh, Do you know anything about cows? No. Do you know anything about cows? Nothing. Yeah, yeah. Which is the I, son of a I, farmer I'm, is kind of bad. You know, I'm sort of surprised that there was a cow stampede. I understand if there's a yeah. bull stampede. Yeah, I cow guess I'm a little stampede. surprised there's a cow Where are they going? I, I don't know. Um, Taco Bell, was it late at night? <laughs> Welcome to PTI, boys and girls. On today's episode, the semis are set for the Euros and Copa America. Steph Curry doubts future dynasties in Coco Golf out at Wimbledon. But we begin today with the baseball All-Star Game selections, 32 of whom are first-timers. One in particular, rookie Paul Skeens, the Pittsburgh pitching sensation, is getting a lot of support to start the game. Chris Sale of the Braves and Ranger Suarez of the Phillies have more wins and more strikeouts than Skeens. Wilbon, should Skeens be the National League starting pitcher? No, 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 no. People go out of their way these days, people in our business, people in whatever industry, sport we're talking about, to just sort of defend the indefensible. No. Suarez and Sale are having better seasons. And then Skeens may, may be, first of all, not just rookie of the year, he may go on to be a candidate for MVP. Then you wait till that happens. This isn't a no. weather forecast. You're not saying, oh, here comes Hurricane Barrel. This is not that. These other two men have done the work, their body of work, and that is what always should be considered, the body of work, not a slice of work. And I look, I watch Skeens more closely because he's in my team's division, Cubs and Pirates. I, I, I know what he's doing, Tony. I know how great yeah. he looks as a young pitcher. But don't tell me his season so far has been better than yeah. Sale or Suarez because it has not been. I'm not going to tell you it's been better. I'm going to disagree with you, and you know my position it's here. It's a TV is show. Clear. Everything's a TV show. The baseball, that's right. Not everything is a TV show. Some things are plays. This is a television <laughs> show. Please. It's not a real game. It's an exhibition game. It doesn't count for anything except viewership. And the cardinal rule in television is very simple. The more people you start with on a broadcast, the better your chances of having a great rating at the end. When does the game start? It probably starts at 8 or 8.30 or 9 or something like that. I would put him out there to start because I would feel this way, that he is a phenom. He's somebody that people haven't seen, really, see him and they inning. ought to want to see Fourth him. Inning. So I would say, um, well, hold on. No, no, I disagree with you. I put him in the first because I want to build the audience early, and I say, sit down for the first inning. We're going to have this guy. I'm not going to argue that he's had a better year. The other two guys have more strikeouts. The other yeah. two guys have more wins. But here's yeah. what Skeens has. He's 5-0. and oh. He's got a better ERA than both Sale and Suarez. He's got a better ratio per nine innings of strikeouts Smaller than both Sam. Sale and Suarez. Yeah. So that's how I feel about it. That to me, Mike, you put this guy out there. I, who's the best hitter in baseball right now? It's Aaron Judge. I want to see him pitch against Aaron Judge. I know that's going to happen in the first inning. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to lead with my draw. I'm putting Caitlin Clark out there. And that's where you and I disagree. Because yeah. to me, it is yeah. an exhibition television yeah. show. God help us if we care about a meritocracy. God help us if we want to earn something. No, just the put other guys people are out pitch, there for right? bigger ratings for a couple of hours. Yes. Let's bring Ralph yes, Cramden out of the grave yes. and put him in Alice no. out there. Mike, the other guys are going to pitch. Suarez is going to pitch. Yeah. Sale is going to pitch. Yeah, one of them would start for me. Skeens would wait until about the fifth or sixth inning for me. Let's move to the future of dynasties in the NBA. I know this has got your interest. Steph Curry tells Malika Andrews he doesn't think that what he and the Warriors did, four titles over eight seasons, will be replicated because it's become too hard for teams to keep players together. Tone, you're on record over years and years and years of loving dynasties. So are you with Steph yes. Curry on this? Okay, so I love the Warriors. I love them because they were so unselfish. I love them because they were artful. I love them because they won without pounding the ball in the middle with bigger people. They actually had smaller people. They had to outthink you. They had to outperform you. Amen. They did all those Amen. things. Amen, they did. But... 
Do I think they're the last dynasty? No, no, stop it. No, they're not the last dynasty. In eight years, they won four and they went to six. LeBron did that by himself at Miami and Cleveland. He went to eight. He won four and he went to eight. I love the Warriors, but they are not particularly unique to me. So I, you know, look, basketball loves dynasties. Since 1990, yes. Mike, yes. 34 champions in basketball, 11 repeat champions. That's almost one third. In the other three major sports, hockey, football, and baseball, 11 out of 101. Basketball with four out of seven all the time really yeah, favors the better teams. But, Mike, let's be fair. The Lakers have won more. The Celtics have won more. The Spurs have won more. The Bulls have won more. So do I think we're not going to see that again? No, I don't think that. If Wembenyama is that good, he's going to win more. Tone, I agree with all that you've said about the history of these things. Because you, you, you're spitting facts just now. I'm going to give you that. Amen. But, Tony, I'm going to agree with Steph Curry in this way. And I love what you said all about the Warriors, so I'm not going to recap that. But, Tony, here's the thing. There are too many good players now. I don't think we're going to see a dynasty. I hope I got at least 20 years left. I don't think we're going to see a dynasty in our lifetimes. I don't. There are too many good players and too many good teams. Tony, there's enough good players from France to stock a league now. And we never – you and I are watching the lottery going, What? So I think that it's too hard to keep teams together, but that's number two for me. I know Steph mentioned yeah. that one. Number one for me is there's so many players. Tony, look, Denver's not finished, I don't think. Minnesota's just getting started. OK's just, OKC is just getting started. Dallas has every reason to think by adding Steph's old shooting partner, his splash brother, that they're going to, you know, ramp it up and get one more step. Their teams in the East, the Celtics, as you point out, you'd make the favorites. The Knicks, Tony, there's too many teams. There never been Mike, this many teams in the NBA before who were a threat at one Mike, time. Never. All you need is the best player. And people will coalesce well, that, around the best the player. If Wembenyama is the guy you say he is, yeah. if he becomes that guy in two years, they'll win five or six. To count out dynasties is crazy because it's that's the sport of dynasties. It is. That's the sport. It is the sport of dynasties. Let's move but it's on. fun spreading it around like this. It's kind of cool. We move to soccer. And I am so glad to be leading to you on this ah. story, Wilbon, because you are Mr. Soccer on this show. You must have called me ten times over the weekend At during least. the Euro quarterfinals. At least. Are you watching France and Portugal? Are you watching? Are you watching the Netherlands and Turkey? Are you it's locked great. In? Turn it on now. Get off your stupid nats. Get off the nats. <laughs> so, Wilbon, are you more interested in the Euro semis or the Copa America semis? I think the Euro semis, it's only one reason, because I know more players from paying attention right. to the Premier League, which you know I've not only paid attention, I started going to That's games right. in England. That's right. Like, I don't know what's yeah. happened to me in this second life. And I pay a little attention to La Liga, and I pay a little attention to League One, and I pay a little attention, you know, you know, to the to the European leagues. I'm fascinated more so, as always, by like Brazil and Argentina in terms of their their, their national teams. But I I pay more attention to the club level stuff in Europe. So therefore, right. and the Dutch fascinate me. The Dutch and the Orange, yeah. and I broke in, and you know when I broke in because you helped break me in. Watching Johan Cruyff, the Dutchman, Cruyff. Yeah, the Cruyff. Dutchman yeah. wearing the orange, and they would be all over Washington, D.C. at like, you know, places like Sign of the Whale, and they would take over these places in D.C. at nights when Johan Cruyff would play. And so it, it, there's a little something there I understand. Tony, these games are yeah. fascinating. I'm trying to pull you in as best I can. They're I know. fascinating, I know. and they are riveting. Yeah, so I, I have to concede that you probably didn't call me during the Copa America quarterfinals because they were at night and you knew that I was asleep. I knew you were asleep. asleep. Yes. And I know, I know you have gone to Europe and you have paid your own money to watch Premier League games. I, I get all of that. And you are very fond of saying to me that soccer stars in Europe are like NBA Huge. stars. They're international. Huge. They are tremendously talented and totally selfish Often and only care crazy. about themselves and do whatever like they want to do. Like wide receivers in the, the only, NFL. The only thing that I would say uh, to support watching Copa America, I guess, is they have Messi. 
And Messi is the greatest star of any sport in the world. He's the number one guy. Lionel Messi, and also maybe I should watch because Uruguay defeating but if you the United watch States. But I'm, I'm Spain, sort of like you. you. Can watch England and the Dutch. I'm, I'm like you because in Europe there are so many small little countries bordering with each other, and their rivalries are so fierce over, you know, centuries, yes. over centuries, yes. basically. So I, I grant that. I like it. I just wish they'd shoot more. Let's take a break. God. Coming up, Get how big it. a deal was Jose Miranda uh. of the Twins? getting hits in 12 straight at bats. How surprised should we be that several big names on Team USA cannot actually spin a ball on an index finger? People might be yeah. surprised. No, I'm, I look, I'm, I'm watching I, Copa too, but I, I, they're more right. into... Dead. Let's find out what's popping with the populace. I'm going to get the first one. I'm putting the glasses Man, on here. A lot of riding here. Twins third baseman Jose Miranda getting hits in 12 straight at bats. Big deal, little deal, no deal. Bigger than big deal. Huge deal. Only four guys in 120 years have done this. And the last one was 70 some years ago, Walt Dropo. And if you want to go all the way back like I do to Johnny Kling, who used to play, you know, with Tinkers to Everest to Chance. It's that early 1900s and 1906 yeah. Cubs, that, you know, back then playing that with Mordecai. You, you know, you remember Mordecai Three Fingers Brown, of course, Tony. Of course I do. We Look, went to high school you get this together. many hits in a row. I don't care if there's circumstances. I, you've done something that gets done every, like, 35, 40 years. That alone is an enormous deal. I know it wasn't plate appearances because it was a HBP somewhere in there, but you hit safely and you're up to you're way above 300 now, and you know we're near that lifetime. Very, very yeah. big deal. Yeah, I mean I agree with that. I'm not saying that he's the best hitter in baseball. No, and I understand that by the end of the year he could go into a tailspin and he could be hitting 220. But the last time this happened, Mike, wasn't 30 or 40 years ago. No. It was 72 70. years ago. Yeah. So it hasn't happened. And if you had asked me at some point, what's the record for consecutive hits, I don't know that I would have gone as high as 12. Because 12 means three straight games every at bat. Yeah. Every at bat. You just got to hit. You want to know what's, what's cool about this? This guy's first cousin is Lin-Manuel Miranda, the guy who wrote Hamilton. Maybe he writes a play about Pretty this. Good. Maybe he writes a musical. <laughs> I would give him a title, Hit Streak. I mean, that's what you should do. Uh, we There's haven't one seen surprise this here. in 72 years. There's one surprise, and that is what? Ted Williams is not on the short list. That's the no. surprise. Well, so if you've done something as that as Ted 12. Williams hasn't that's done, right. big, 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 that's big right. deal. Now, here's the next one. Are you surprised that LeBron, Steph Curry, and Joel Embiid were not able to spin a ball on one finger. Well, well let's go individually because I'm not going to take all three of them. I wouldn't say Joel Embiid, as a big man, would do that. Steph Curry's the big surprise here. I, I guess LeBron to some degree. And you see kids, look, I grew up with kids who could do this and it would infuriate me because I couldn't do it. And then you, you, like, like, you, you know Kyrie Irving could do it for like a half an hour. He could probably take a nap and still spin it. But Steph Curry does surprise me. It doesn't mean anything. You know Wilt had to be able to do this because he was a Harlem Globetrotter for a while. So, Wilt, I'm guessing, right. and you can go back. You were When you were covering the league, practices, you went to practices every day and saw guys do all kinds of stuff. I presume yes. Julius Irving could do it. I'm sure Wilt could do it because, again, he was a Globetrotter. But Steph Curry may yeah. surprise me a little bit, but it doesn't mean anything because I'd rather do the stuff Steph Curry can do than the stuff he can't do. Right. It's amazing because Mordecai Three Finger Brown, who you referenced if before, do, could do it on do all it. three of his fingers. <laughs> he could go. do that. Um, I'm not surprised about Embiid. No. no. I am surprised about LeBron. If a bit. guy calls himself the GOAT and he can't spin the ball, I guarantee you today's Monday, by Tuesday, he will be able to spin the ball because <laughs> he doesn't want to live in a world where Drew Holiday can do it and he can't do it. But yes, like you, I am floored that Steph Curry can't do it yeah. because he is a wizard, wizard. with a wizard. basketball. Yes. People go to his games two hours before yes, tip I'm one of to them. see him <laughs> yes. dribble around and do all that stuff with a basketball. You're telling me he can't spin it, and it was obvious he was upset by this as he slammed the annoying. ball down that he can't, he was he annoying. can't do this. I would have 
Like I would have bet the bet ranch money. he could do By it. By the way, there's something that LeBron has practiced and does that's so much harder. And he doesn't drag it out. He doesn't brag about it. But he's told me about it on camera, even though the tape wasn't used. So I'm going to mention it. LeBron James has practiced and knows how to shoot the skyhook. And I have said to him, oh, my God, please do this because no one yeah, can do, do this. And LeBron has gone and he's worked on it. He said, no, he doesn't do I'm it. not ready to do it. do it. But he's wor- he's. Yeah. He's practiced What it. is he waiting for? That's harder. His grandchildren to That's play in the league? That's harder, Not female. Let's take one last break. It's not harder. But still to come, oh, Coco Gauff does not get the help she was looking for at Wimbledon. The sky hook is not harder? What? No. A new report no. says the next U.S. Ryder Cup captain will not be Eldrick Woods, after all. It's the harder. sky hook is harder if you're a guard. Unless you're Magic Johnson. No, those big, powerful guys can get in position to take the sky hook. But nobody's done it they since can Kareem. Do that. Well, because it's an... Happy time, people. Happy belated 52nd birthday, Lisa Leslie. This was yesterday. As more and more eyeballs fall on the WNBA because of the charisma of Caitlin Clark, and more and more people advocate a flowering of women's basketball, it's wise to go back and remember some of the pioneering players like Cheryl Miller and Nancy Lieberman and Lisa Leslie. At 6'5", Leslie is arguably the first great big in women's basketball. College Player of the Year at USC. She went to the Los Angeles Sparks of the WNBA. She was three-time league MVP, two-time league champion. Leslie played on four Olympic gold medal teams and was inducted into both the Naismith Hall of Fame and the Women's Basketball Hall of Fame. Here, here. Don't forget Cheryl Swoops and those pioneers. Tony, Lisa Leslie, first of all, 52 years old is not possible. You know, I, I see Lisa Leslie around and stuff like the Hall of Fame or games in L.A. And she looks like she's 32 and can still go out and post some people yeah. up again right now. And you, kudos that you mentioned her as one of the pioneers. Yes, there's new yeah. popularity, new found popularity. But those pillars of that league, Lisa Leslie is one of them. Amen. Yes, I agree. Happy anniversary, Andy Murray. Around this day, 11 years ago, Murray beat Novak Djokovic in straight sets, 6-4, 7-5, 6-4, to become the first British man to win the Wimbledon singles title since Fred Perry in 1936. It's easy to forget that Murray was ranked number one in the world for 41 weeks and finished 2016 holding that ranking. Ultimately, Murray won two Wimbledons and one U.S. Open and reached 11 major finals. Now, this pales in comparison to Federer, Nadal, and Djokovic. But for nearly a decade, from 2008 to 2017, tennis people spoke of a big four that included Murray. Murray had an emotional send-off from Wimbledon just last week after playing doubles with his older brother, Jamie. And British tennis fans will always think of him as our Andy. Tony, to be in England, and I've been in England, not at the All England Club, but in England, in London, when Andy Murray won, and, you know, I mean, watch parties are all the rage now, but not necessarily then. But these watch parties were so emotional and so warm and yeah. people sobbing, tears of joy for Andy Murray. You couldn't help but be affected by it. I certainly was. Good for him. Andy Murray and Virginia Wade. Yes. Our Ginny. Yes. She did it, too. Happy trails, Coco Goff. Goff's run as the top remaining seed on the women's side at Wimbledon did not last long. After one seed, Igor Sviantek went out on Saturday. Goff followed suit on Sunday, losing 6-4, 6-3 to American Emma Navarro. During the second set, Goff repeatedly looked to her coach, Brad Gilbert, for help to no avail. Navarro said seeing Goff's frustration might have helped her gain some confidence. The 23-year-old Navarro took out Naomi Osaka earlier in the tournament. Tony, what is this obsession with the box and young tennis players? And it's not just Goff who did it completely. She was saying to them, Brad Gilbert, like, talk to me. To say what? Stop hitting four hands at one after another halfway up the net? I mean, Alcaraz did this. I saw him last year do it. And I remember just saying, what are we talking about here? This is not a team sport. It's an individual sport. You guys are great players. You're going to figure it out. What is the box supposed to do? And the obsession with it, it was just insane to me. So I... Yeah, I want to follow up on this. For many, many years, tennis coaches were not allowed to do anything, couldn't even Guess give hand rules. signals. Yeah. If they were shown doing that, they were thrown out. All right, so, so players learned to play on their own. Now you can consult a coach. Okay, but if you're the player 
and A and B are not working. You got to go to C That's and D. Right. You got to do that on your own. That's why you're out there. All of these players who have all of these teams around them, so, it's too stop. much. Just go play. They should go yes, back to the old rule. No coaching. If you yes, see, yes. Call, you're out. Get out. Let's Let's go to the big finish. The Let's Bulls signed and traded DeMar DeRozan to the Kings. Is that a big addition? Yes. Fox, a bonus, DeRozan, Herter, Keegan Murray. Tony, that's a starting five. They can bump up a few games in the West. I know it's hard, but that's an improvement. 24 points a game for DeRozan last year for the Bulls. Tiger Woods has turned down the U.S. Ryder Cup candidacy, so it will go to Keegan Bradley. What? What is that? I don't understand this. I thought Tiger wanted this. Keegan Bradley should get it because he was left off the team last year as a player. But I don't really understand this. The Cubs placed reliever Colton Brewer on the 60-day IL after your boy punched a wall and broke his non-pitching hand. Your thoughts? It's the Cubs season in a nutshell. And all, some pitcher always does this every year. Now it's one of ours. Bengals quarterback Joe Burrow told Complex, whatever that is, he's taking piano lessons in part to rehab his wrist. You like that? I do. Play the piano, rehab your wrist, and perhaps become a lounge act down the road. Last one, 13 seed Taylor Fritz came back from two sets down to be four seed Alexander Zverev. You impressed? I watched the last two sets. Impressive. Alcaraz and Tommy Paul tomorrow. Watch it. We're out of time. We'll try and do better the next time. Peter Hicks, happy birthday. I'm Mike Wilbon. Same time tomorrow, Knuckleheads. You can get the podcast on the app or Apple Podcasts. Yeah. Gonna gel into a unit that can bring home a fifth straight gold medal in TI's bonus topic. All right, Wilbon, how challenging will the Olympics be for Team USA with all the NBA talent on all those other nations? Tony, I think very challenging. And I, I've been talking to some people involved and around USA basketball, and the people I talk to take it very seriously, even though fans in our country do not. You talk to the basic fan in our country, no matter how plugged in they are or aren't, and what you're going to hear is, we're going to crush people. Eh? I'm not buying that. First of all, there are 125, like a quarter of the NBA is foreign-born from 40 different countries. And while the FIBA rankings seem largely possibly bogus, because they got like Canada seventh, I'll go more with the Vegas odds that have the United States, of course, first, and then Canada, France, Serbia, Greece, Germany. Tony, it's not a matter of other countries having one or two or four players. Other countries have their rosters full of NBA players, full. Yeah. And when those players aren't all NBA, they can play in the NBA and maybe choose to play elsewhere in the world. So this is going to be very challenging, in my opinion. Very. I'm not saying it's not going to be challenging, and I'm going to be brief here. We're the favorite because we have the most talent because we have the best players. Other teams have three NBA players, four NBA players, maybe five NBA players. We have all NBA Were players. Were you just listening to My me? Fear, Other rosters have I, entire NBA rosters. No, they don't. No, Canada they don't. Does. They don't have 12 NBA players. Canada we has have all 26 NBA players. players in the NBA. You mean to tell me you think they won't have all NBA players? Wait, are, are they in the NBA players right now? 26 Canadian yes. players in the NBA France right has 14 now? So right maybe now. we're still better than them. We should win. My fear is this that we put together a team where a lot of the older stars say, oh, yeah, I want to play. Yeah, yeah. I want to play. Yeah. But they're not as hungry as some of the younger American players who have been left off the team, not as coachable. So, yeah, I, I do think it's challenging, but all things considered, we should win. We should, Tone, and I think we will. I'm just yeah. saying, I think it's going to be difficult. By the way, no Luca in this, Slovenia out. No Jalen Brunson. Yeah. His country's in, but as of yet, so far, he's not on the roster. And suppose Embiid was playing for France, which he could have, instead of the United States. But he didn't. Which he, but I know, here. I'm just saying, Wait, that I, might have tilted the scale. Can I go back scale. on this? There are 26 Canadian-born players in, in the NBA right now. How about that? I have no idea. Including I five or six. the runner-up for MVP, Shea Gilgis-Alexander. Right. I'm just saying. Wow. Well, you know, you know what I'm saying? It's going to be hard. Maybe I'll take a flyer on Canada. Worth watching. Make some money. We going to Vegas? You and I? That's it. No, We're done. Bet anywhere. Bet on my phone. Bet oh. on your phone. Oh. Bet on your kid's phone. That's not as fun. Won't back get tracked. You. Yeah.